Hello, this is Manesh Patel from the EII Capital Group. Today is May 29, 2011. This is a weekly Ichimoku analysis for the currency market. Before we begin, let's go for a normal disclaimer. This is for educational use only. All charts are in Thinkorswim Trade Station on freestockcharts.com. Here are my contact details. You can email me at mpatel at eiicapital.com. Or you can follow us on our website, ichimukutrade.com. You can follow us on Twitter, ichimukutrading. Okay, so we're going to start off as we normally do. We're going to go straight to the heat map, uh, and we're going to look at the heat map there. And what we're looking for, remember, we're on here. We have a rating system uh, where the rating system goes from negative eight to positive eight. Uh, for bullish scenarios, we're looking for five to eight, where eight is being extreme bullish. And for the bearish side, we're looking for negative five to negative eight. D zero is the current daily Ichimoku rating. D5 is the Ichimoku rating five days ago. W0 is the current weekly Ichimoku rating. And W1 is the Ichimoku rating from one week ago. Okay. And what we're basically looking for is a four or five here for bullish and negative four, negative five from being bearish, uh, which is starting off a trend with support of the weekly time frame in the same direction. Okay. You can see this got bearish here, that got bullish, so that's not good at all. So that shows there's conflict among the two different time frames there. Um, we're going to look at the pound USD. It's not quite ready there. Uh, we'll definitely go look at that one. Um, New Zealand USD, really nothing there. It's well gone extreme bullish there, but weakened on the uh, weekly time frame, which is not good at all. Um, <clears throat> so we're just going to scroll down. US CAD has gone more bullish, but look at the weekly. It's kind of getting its, it's reverse direction, so this is counter trend. Um, U.S. SWITSI is on extreme bearish, but we'll look at that one. That's one of the major currency pairs. Here's one we'll definitely look at U.S. Yen. Uh, that looks like there, but the weekly kind of went the other way around, so that's not good. Uh, scrolling down, don't really see much of anything right now. New Zealand Yen we're going to definitely look at because that looks like an opportunity right there, maybe. Uh, but the weekly's kind of gone reverse direction. Uh, just scrolling down. Switzy, yeah, and there you go. That looks like good, but again, the weekly has kind of gone a different direction there. Um, we also got Euro Switzy. Euro Switzy looks good, but the weekly, of course. A lot of these, the weekly has gone different directions, so that's not good at all. And we're just going to scroll down this list and see what we're finding right now. Uh, Euro Australian. Uh, is one we could look at again. The weekly is kind of get different. Uh, that's not good at all. And we're just scrolling down, and really, there's not much opportunity still. Uh, we found a couple of them last week, but not much this week. Anyways, let's start going for the major pairs, and let's start going through analyzing each one of them. Uh, this is the Euro USD. I remember on the left hand side is a weekly time frame, right hand side is basically the daily time frame here. If you look at this chart, let me just delete these lines to make it easier for everyone. Right now on the weekly time frame we're basically consolidating. <coughs> Major support is going to be basically at 1.3906. Major resistance is going to be 1.4454 for long term. If you look at a daily time frame over here, uh, this is in the clouds as we're consolidating. However, this looks like it's trying to set up to go bearish and to go down. Uh, however, you're not going to really know that until it breaks this 1.3906 level. If it does, it's finally going to enter a major pullback as far as long-term picture is concerned, uh, which would be healthy. Uh, but we have to wait to, for that to happen, and the daily will give us a good indication of that. If it starts breaking below 1.4, then we're definitely going to sit there and start moving lower. Uh, if it gets above 1.4454, uh, and then we got high possibility of retesting the highs. Let's go look at pound USD. Pound USD, as you notice, is a little more stronger than the Euro USD. If you look at the weekly time frame last week, it went up. Uh, we went above the resistance level 1.6401. Uh, and if you look at the uh, support level, that's 6044. Um, so that was good on that big move up last week. Uh, it's pretty much being held, being able to hold the Cajun in. If you look at the daily time frame here, you can see that big move up that it had, the pound USD last week. However, this thing definitely needs to pull back, go down 
and then it starts making a move up, that would be great. In fact, it's probably got this week to do that. If it could do that, then this thing does have a possibility of continuing to go up higher. Uh, but I definitely would not bet on it being bullish right now, uh, starting a trend on the daily at all until it moves down. Uh, support levels on the daily time frame are going to be 64.01 and also 62.84. Ideally, if it could get to 62.84, go down there and hold, and then start going up, that would be a perfect bullish trend uh, starting to develop. Okay, next one we're going to look at is Australian Switz, sorry, U.S. Switzy. U.S. Switzy, there's nothing much really there. The weekly time frame is bearish trending, as you could see on the daily time frame. It had a huge move down uh, last Friday. Uh, it, that was too big of a move so that's going to definitely go up and then go back down so if it could sit there and go up and then start going down this this trend on the weekly time frame is going to continue to go and believe it or not this weekly time frame the momentum that trend is still very very healthy uh, so this thing does have a possibility to keep on going down lower uh, but it's oversold uh, as far as the daily is concerned right now US CAD if you look at US CAD finally things starting to make a move hopefully it could break the Cajun in right now the resistance level on the weekly time frames at 98.26 so we're going to wait for that to happen <clears throat> if you look at the daily time frame things are starting to flip around and it looks like it's up there and can possibly start a bullish trend as far as the daily is concerned um, definitely needs to start moving above uh, 98.50 if it does then it def definitely looks like it can get to par which would be a counter trend movement for the weekly Australian USD I'm just gonna go for the major USD pairs real fast if you look at the weekly time frame it's basically bullish trending upwards it's nice movement upward um, <coughs> well what happened there I'm gonna zoom in a little here uh, if you look at the support levels basically 64 uh, 064, uh, 649 is the uh, support level uh, minor and major is going to be 370, uh, 357 if you look at the daily time frame here believe it or not everything's in a state of influx so even though the weekly is bullish trending the daily is basically in a state of influx it's got to break the 725 level uh, and start going higher um, but before it does that it may sit there go down to 581 pull back to that level and then start going up but it's got to sit there and start making a move but up uh, it's got to do that this week sometime to start making a move up if it does uh, then it has a possibility of retesting the highs but time will tell on that one uh, New Zealand USD if we look at this one you could tell it's bullish trending on the weekly time frame and bullish trending on the daily time frame and the daily time frame even though it's been moving up it needs a little pullback right now to kind of equalize some things if it does, then it, and then it could keep on going higher. Uh, if it could get to at least uh, 81.24, um, then this thing could sit there, hold there, and then keep on going higher. This is a very, very good trade on bullish trend going up. Um, one pair we forgot to look at real fast is the US Yen. Uh, if you look at the weekly time frame, uh, things are still in a state of influx there. You could see that this thing is definitely bearish. Uh, it is the more it consolidates here, it's trying to get into a mode of starting a bearish trend again. And you could see that from the daily time frame here, uh, where things have flipped over uh, finally for the future cloud now. A uh, little movement up downwards, then this thing does have a possibility of entering a daily bearish trend, believe it or not. Uh, where we may even believe it or not go and start retesting here going all the way to 78 and maybe lower here to 76 who knows um, but only time will tell on that one uh, let's go look at euro let's see what was the I'm gonna look at the heat map again to go look at some of the other pairs uh, I think euro Australian was one that we wanted to look at <coughs> if you look at euro Australian the weekly time frame here uh, it's moving downwards. Uh, if you could see here, it's kind of retested this little low here, kind of pivot up. Uh, it's got to it's got to move up a little if it can. Otherwise, it's got to start breaking down. This thing really has got to sit there and break down and retest this low in the next two weeks. If it doesn't, uh, then this bearish momentum is going to be pretty much over. If you look at the daily time frame here. 
you could see it is bearish trending but it's kind of chopping here right here at this level here and it's really got to start breaking down here below 3261 if it does it's going to start starting a trend uh, but the movement really has to be within the next two to weeks if it doesn't break down in the next two weeks this thing's going to reverse uh, or start consolidating uh, pretty nicely uh, Euro, let's go look at Euro Switzy. You can see the Switzy is getting strong with all the currencies against the dollar, against the euro, everything. You can see uh, the breakout last week. It broke this uh, support level here, went down lower, and you could see that exactly on this picture here, where it made it over a 300 pip movement going down. Right now, this thing does need to equalize, so you're going to probably get a pullback upwards, and then it'll start probably uh, going back down again. Um, but you know you have to wait and see exactly what's going to happen but look at this nice trend if you've been in this for a very long time on a weekly time frame you've, you've captured over 3,000 pips uh, since the beginning of this year uh, if you've been betting on the Swiss you're getting strong um, let's go look at Euro Pound real fast and you can see there's nothing there on a weekly time frame it's consolidating and really the daily is actually starting to set up to be bearish uh, so this cloud breakout here could be a fake one and it could start making a move downwards. That's it for this week. Hope you enjoyed it. Speak to you next.